welcome to our Advent worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. In the night watches, send forth a dream to your people that will give us a living hope as we eagerly await the fulfillment of your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our text for the second week of Advent, again, is from Genesis, beginning at the 27th chapter. Now Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are approaching. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But the words of her elder son, Esau, were told to Rebekah. So she sent and called her younger son, Jacob, and said to him, Your brother Esau is consoling himself by planning to kill you. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Flee at once to my brother Laban in Haran, and stay with him until your brother's fury turns away until your brother's anger against you turns away and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send and bring you back from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. Here ends the reading. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer, our light and our life. Amen. Last week, we heard Abram's dream, the promise that he would be blessed to be a blessing. Tonight, we hear a dream of a scoundrel, Jacob had tricked his brother out of his rightful blessing. And his brother was rightfully angry. The division between them was severe. And so in tonight's reading, we find him running away. Because there is no safety in his brother's house. But in the running away, in the midst of the wilderness, 
where there is no one around. Jacob, alone, in the darkness of night, receives a dream. A dream that contains a promise. A promise that God is present. That God will be with him. A promise that heaven and earth shall meet. And that in that meeting, the messages of God, the messengers of God, will connect heaven and earth in such a way that there will indeed be holiness, righteousness, goodness, blessing upon the earth. Jacob, of course, is terrified that receiving this blessing that was first given to his ancestor Abram and now is given to him is both an honor and a charge that he who has been a scoundrel must now become one of God's own, reflecting the love of God that has been shown to him. He takes the stone upon which he slept and sets it up as a pillar and pours oil over it, something that is nonsensical to us. But yet in that day was again a sign of a covenant, an agreement, a promise. We, in this time of waiting, are assured again by a dream. It's nothing that we can lay our hands upon. When we open our eyes, it drifts away. And yet that dream holds for us a truth that we wait to be revealed at Christmas. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you are the light in our darkness. Keep watch with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend to the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering. Comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous. We give you thanks for the day, especially for the good we were permitted to give and to receive. And now that the day is past, we commit it to you. We entrust to you the night. We rest securely 
for you are our help and you neither slumber nor sleep. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you.